Hey, welcome back, Ram Revival Part 3, as we left it last night. Got the clutch fan and the fan shroud out of the way. That's pretty much all we did. Kind of walked you through some tips and tricks to make that happen. But uh, that's always a milestone. That's a huge headache. Anytime you get over that hurdle, it's a step in the right direction. Now, where I left it off, we had drained. We also removed the lower radiator hose from the radiator, got it dumped, tried to make sure we got everything cleared out of it. What I have in my hand, these are just some cheap hose pick <laughs> tools. Now the connections off of the radiator, given that it's a plastic neck, super smooth, super easy, no issue. That's an old water pump that's been on there 20 years and it started leaking through the weep hole, so had to resort to some uh, additional help here. Got it pried off, we should be ready to go to town. If I can just set these down somewhere. We've kind of lost a lot of our uh, you know, storage space here. Anyhow, once you get your tools out of the way, which is easier if you're not filming, you should be able now to pull this off, hopefully, not make a mess. Alright, here we go. Smooth, smooth, smooth. I think you can see it. That's what we like to see, minimal leaks. Oh, got a little bit in the hose. I was worried, I was thinking maybe it's somehow in the pump there, but we got that in place. Uh, we will just... What will we do as I'm draped in this engine bay? Set that down. Perfect. You know, I'll take it. <laughs> so, uh, the better thing to do is to have a rag. I know your water pump's trash and everything, but in the event that there is any coolant sitting around in there, as you're jostling around, it may spill, particularly if you're under the vehicle. You don't want that. Uh, so be sure to plug that up with a rag. Can't remember if I mentioned, but again, alternator pulley there's no side to side there's no up and down with this sucker there's a little bit of everything that is a sign when you start seeing that puddle on the front of your vehicle it could be anything it could be your thermostat housing it could be you know you busted the bypass hose it could be the water pump the water pump will fail and it will fail catastrophically however you typically if you pay attention can catch it ahead of time that's what we were able to do and uh, subsequently we avoided maximum disaster, but that's an easy way to tell. You can do that again even with the clutch fan in place. But since there are so many areas that coolant could be coming down at the front of the block and it's all gonna trail on its way down past the water pump, that's a surefire way to indicate where you're at. Now, what I am going to do, and this will differ uh, for you. Some of you have a different aftermarket air intake. Some of you have the same one. Some of you still have the factory. The bottom line, all this kind of needs to go. I may actually leave the air box, and that's not because I'm lazy. That's because I want to see if when I swing um, the compressor for the air conditioner over this way, I'm wondering if it'll just drop in place here. It's kind of a stupid idea, but it could also be really smart, and I don't know which one it is until we try. So. Uh, if you've got something similar, may keep that in mind, but your filter needs to go, the tube needs to get out of the way, and of course uh, your hat on the throttle body needs to go. Now the good news is, if I'm remembering correctly, even the factory connections there would be the same. Uh, you can come in with just a flat blade, if that's what you've got to work with, that'll certainly get the job done. Uh, and then something I prefer to do, particularly if you have them, nut drivers. Fantastic little device. Way easier. You're less likely to slip off all your connections. In the event here, everything I've got is 5 sixteenths. You're probably going to be 5 sixteenths or a quarter most likely. But uh, I'm going to get that done off camera here. Again, it will vary depending on what your truck or your vehicle has. But uh, that'll free up a little bit more real estate for us. And uh, trying to think what we need to do next. I've kind of all these lines here are going to be on the two sides here. That'll be for our automatic transmission cooler. Uh, you can see the hard lines kind of bundled up right there. They transition to soft lines to go to the radiator. We're going to need to remove those and plug them. I'll update you on the tools here in just a second. And then that one down there, I'll try to zoom in. It's probably a bad idea. That little box it looks like a miniature radiator in black. I'm guessing the truck has a power steering cooler. I honestly don't remember. Well, that's what those lines are, so it must be. Uh, again, it would feed in, cool, come back into the steering gear down there. That's that kind of ugly brown thing bolted to the frame rail. And 
I don't know if that's going to complicate things or not, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to take it from there. Again, my end goal here is to kind of leave our power steering pump and the AC compressor here, lines attached intact if possible. Uh, we'll figure out whether that can happen or not. But once again, just off camera, I'm going to remove part of my uh, air intake. If you have the factory one, I remember it very well, you're going to have the exact same setup. Uh, it's sort of going to be a plastic box that'll mount right about here. It's got three clips on it that will always break, probably already are. This plate that you see right there, there's an unused stud. Uh, this locates in the back and then this has threads and has a nut that's actually underneath your air filter. That's still here just because I left it. I hated servicing the factory air filter. That's one of the big reasons I went aftermarket. It's not a terrible setup from the factory. It's actually pretty good. But servicing that filter was a complete pain in the butt. Uh, so you've got that housing and then you have kind of the corrugated tube. There'll be like a flex section here, solid plastic area that says, I think, Dodge Magnum, if I remember correctly. And then another flex section over here going into your inner fender. That is where you can disconnect. You just kind of squeeze in. There's little tabs on it. Same thing here. That'll get your tube out of the way. Once that's out of the way, you can just come in, start taking the top box off and go to town. <laughs> so again, most of you probably gonna have something aftermarket by this point. Uh, for the same reasons I mentioned, the factory setup was good. It was a total pain in the butt uh, to clean or replace your filter. So uh, that said, I'm going to tackle some of this. We'll be back for a progress point. All right. First off, my apologies. This is not how I intended to do things. I didn't factor in how actually tall the truck was. I figured I'd be able to record all of this with a tripod. Not the case. Uh, coming in down there, the power steering cooler. All right. I've investigated. It looks to be a simple bracket. There's one 10 millimeter bolt sort of closest to us, closest to the hose connection side. It just loops over on the back side for the cooling cycle. I can remove that. I think I'm going to. It's just then going to dangle. Uh, we shouldn't be under the truck a whole lot that far up, particularly once the radiator's gone. Uh, but that's kind of like a catch-22, depending on how you how you mount and string everything. The issue is that uh, bottom hose, the dirty one, kind of I'm at the tip of the U right there. That connects directly to the steering gear, and the problem with that is that's going to limit where that can go to that point, assuming you're trying to keep all your fluid in. Uh, so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I've been kind of debating which route I want to go. Uh, all of the air intake system is off. The tube that you see right here, that is going to be our PCV line. Uh, it'll connect pretty much in the exact same spot with the factory inlet. Uh, might want to cap that. I've stuffed a rag in the bottom of the water pump outlet. And we're to the point now where we've got to deal with these trans cooler lines. I've gone ahead. This is 11 sixteenths. I've got it loosened. As you can see, we can turn it freely by hand. Uh, it's one of those things I love to record it, but I can't. And so I'm also trying to minimize my own mess. So I'm thinking I'm going to grab some rags. Uh, down here, though, and this one's been leaking for a while. Uh, these are just sort of like a safety clip. If you can kind of see that brass colored... You can't. This piece here that I'm swiveling around, that is just a safety clip. And I don't know that I can do it without a screwdriver. I will try. The problem is I've got that bucket down there and I don't want it to go there. But I got the clip off, just one-handed there for you. Again, that's just sort of like a safety deal in case it were to blow off. To get that off, you're going to need a special tool. You can kind of rig something, but those colored pieces you see on top of my radiator, that's what we're going to need. Uh, we'll slide one in. They're sort of cut on one side. You can't really see it, but they'll slip over the line, and then they just sort of disconnect the hose. So I'm going to do that. Again, sadly, I can't film it, but I will let you know what size it is once I determine it. Note the other line right there. I uh, kind of where the tip of my finger is, exact same setup with a clip like this. It's just dirtier. And uh, then we're going to have the same disconnect. So I'll figure all this up. I'm working towards maybe just pulling the radiator out tonight. 
And uh, at that point in time, I don't really think that cooler is going to be in the way of the radiator. Unless we drop it, <laughs> that would be a problem. Uh, but it's essentially two bolts, one here, kind of where my finger would extend, one on the other side. That's it. The bottom is just kind of held in place, I believe, with like rubber suctions. So we'll investigate that as well. And then we'll just move on as we go. So bear with me and we will get this figured out. Okay, so uh, these safety glasses really suck. <laughs> we got lucky, optimal bucket position, thinking ahead. Uh, that was the blue one, which would be 3 8 if I'm not mistaken. I grabbed it right off the bat and got lucky. Yeah, 3 8 So that's what we needed to take that line off. Again, ideally you would separate that, but there's really nothing I can do at this point in time. So there we are. But uh, that's essentially you know what you've got to work with this side here runs back to the transmission we want to cap that uh, as best we can so i'm going to do that we will let this drain i might try to bottle it separately but obviously i need both hands so i will circle back and we will check in all right so for your sake and mine i'm going to walk you through this i caught the trans fluid in the bottle and uh, then as soon as I moved another hose, the bottle fell into the bucket anyway. So classic. Wasn't a ton, but I mean just enough, you know, to always make a mess. So the silver barb that you see down there, all right, I'm going to walk you through it like this. If I were to take this and connect that blue shop towel there, this is the one that for whatever reason didn't have a disconnect. It just had the factory you know, ring clamp, which is rare because uh, it's typically constant tension, but that's how it was set up. This is all original still. I can't explain what their logic was there, uh, but that is what we have. Coming off of that line, it's going to come up here. This will be the top connection uh, to your trans cooler. So essentially, there's your cap, your fill point, uh, then you've got the barb for your overflow. That brass fitting there goes to this line nut and tube, and that is the connection. This then would snake around, and it would be that top tube. So if I come in and touch right there, that is the top tube going off to the trans cooler, presumably, which we can't see. Well, I assume it's there. That's what's going on. Now, what I'm going to do, we have... You can see the blue shop rag in that other quick disconnect. Uh, the one that was leaking, of course, is the barb right there above the lower water outlet. Again, with the light, it's just super hard to focus on anything. But uh, there's a shop rag. That is what I'm calling the short line. It's the short line that runs from here to there. It's going to be at that point, sort of the inboard hard line here when we get to the frame rail comes short line connects by way of quick disconnect to that point on your radiator the other trans line that's got the clip i've removed the clip we haven't disconnected the line just yet it will be the longer hose and again it will be the uh, outboard if you will if you just look at it from that frame rail you've got the inboard to the short hose and then the uh outboard hard line translates to a longer soft line that goes to what will be the bottom of the lines that snake over here and disappear so uh, hopefully that makes sense hopefully that walks you through it again it will be the blue or the 3 8 quick disconnect tool that we need gonna go ahead and get that out and then we will have should just be like i said the two bolts on the radiator and we'll tackle that i should point out this clamp right here and then the one on our pcv valve uh, to the cold air intake tube that required a quarter inch tube nut again this one's gummed up so bad uh, this is where you would actually prefer having a nut driver i don't know why i said tube nut a second ago uh, but you can technically turn it with a slotted driver it's just way way easier and more uh more efficient use of your time if you come in and use a uh, nut driver so i'm gonna disconnect that one try to contain the fluid try to plug it and uh, then we will be able to hopefully remove the radiator all right, I want to highlight this for you. You can see the blue collar. Again, that was our disconnect. That is the outboard line, longer soft hose, and then it goes to the bottom line on the front of the trans cooler. So essentially, you can see those two hard lines in parallel right there. The outboard one, the one closest to my finger, 
comes in, we have the hard line transition to a soft line. It's a little bit longer, I believe. It's going to go to the bottom connection where you see that blue quick release. Uh, we're now ready to remove the radiator almost, but to kind of point this out before we track around the truck here, we've got a 10 millimeter bolt right there. We want to break that free. Once we do that, we're going to take a look at the other one. But in the meantime, we got to hop down here. See those kind of, I don't really know what they are, I assume like the black leather pieces that kind of cover the engine bay, keep heat in, uh, cold air and bugs out, whatever they accomplish, all the lines run through it. Right down here are going to be our trans cooler lines. Again, the bottom tube is the one we just disconnected that has the longer line and the outboard one. The problem is, I'm going to bring you over here through the grill guard, which could be a problem later. See this black piece I'm sort of angling towards right there? Let me uh, find somewhere to set the ratchet down. Beautiful. Okay, so with the tip of this driver, I'm going to touch on something right there. I think you can see it decently. That is a clip coming down, conveniently located and I say that sarcastically, between these two hard lines, see what looks like the plastic piece I'm circling? That's another trim clip. Coming over here, this is way easier on the passenger side. We don't have anything to mess with. Again, this will be parallel, uh, symmetrical. So where you see this clip, which you can see much easier, right in line with it on the driver's side, we have the same thing. The catch is, there's just uh, some AC lines blocking it. Down here, lower on the passenger side, you can see the clip right there. You've got the exact same thing, parallel on the driver's side. It's just your two trans cooler lines are going to block it. What those turn out to be, when I pop this over, uh, you can come in, this would be your passenger side 10 millimeter that you need to loosen. That's it, those are your two bolts holding the radiator in place. But coming down, you'll see you've got the fan shroud bolt. When you're like, well, no big deal, you just put that back in place, shroud's gone, what's the issue? Well, right there, you'll see it. See that plastic pin? That's the back end of what I call like a Christmas tree or a push pin. And those, my friends, are what's holding this leather in place. So you've got two options. You can either come in here, snake around. You'll see some bolts here, it's kind of cut around. And then there's a trim piece there you know, like the push pin, you could remove the ones off of your cowl, fender area, wherever they may be, or you could simply remove it from the radiator. If you don't remove it from the radiator and you opt to disconnect here, you're gonna have these flapping around when you pull the radiator out. I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect from the radiator. Uh, so to do that, you'll need a trim tool, which I believe I have sitting right there uh, one of those that style villa handle green and black one that'll make your life a lot easier with that said i'm gonna see how hard it is to snake it in there between all these cooler lines and we'll see how we do all right i don't recommend you do this but for the sake of video purposes this is what you should be left with the good news is i was thinking we might have to jaw with it and fight it to get it out of the bottom insulators it looks like that won't be difficult uh, luckily i've kind of got it braced i was watching very carefully the power steering cooler it looks like that's going to be a non-issue at least in terms of removing the radiator pay close attention this is why you want a nice ratchet for this that sucker is threaded it goes in right there, uh, both sides, and that is a, a pretty long screw with some fine threads on that bolt. So, uh, needless to say, be ready for that. Again, fine tooth ratchet, make your life a little bit easier. You can finally see the transmission cooler back in there. I can also uh, clean the front of the radiator, which uh, that's completely occluded by all that. You'll also note we've got the uh, leather, whatever patch panels we want to call that in place there but disconnected from the radiator the other reason i let this down be prepared when you lift this out uh, whether it's coolant or transmission fluid you probably got residual fluid i'm going to tilt mine back up and see if i have some vacuum caps or plugs if not i'm going to stuff rags in those ports uh, last thing you want is like dump fluid all over your fender uh, your front bumper, your grill guard, your floor, whatever you have in front of the vehicle or where you set the radiator. <laughs> so, nonetheless, uh, the battery is getting low. It's uh, pretty late, about 11.30 tonight. Uh, might uh, lift this out call tonight, but hey, uh, we got the air box off. 
got this kind of figured out, taken apart. Uh, those lines are a complete pain in the butt. I'm somebody, I'm not accustomed to dealing with the quick disconnects like that. I do kind of old school stuff and then AN fittings. <laughs> and so it's simple, but you really have to wiggle that. With that being a hard line that close, you don't have a lot of flex. But anyway, let's get this thing out, see what we've got, and uh, see if we're going to call it a night or not. All right, so there is the radiator. You'll note one glaring issue with it. Uh, more on that in just a second, but uh, the cap, I did find a vacuum cap that would fit the trans cooler port at the bottom. It's 5 sixteenths. Obviously, when you lift this thing up, keep in mind there could be coolant. I speak from experience in more ways than one. You'll note, I had a plug in the uh, lower radiator outlet, right? You remember the trans fluid dripping on it, right? Well, everything was going a little too good. This is this is what happens uh, when you when you get into this stuff. So I lift the radiator out. Zero issue. I mean, it went beautiful. I've got the hood up. I'm a one-man show. I don't have a ton of space because I'm in the middle of cleaning the shop up. Uh, here's what we're left with now, by the way. You can see the trans cooler. You can actually make sense of the lines now that just mysteriously disappeared in the past. Uh, right in front of there, we got the AC stuff. We got that little triangulating brace. Which I'm thinking tomorrow uh, we may very well come in and move the uh, upper radiator support brace just because I think it'd make getting the engine out a lot easier. Uh, in my opinion, it's easier than taking the hood off. Again, particularly as a one man show, if you got a buddy, it's not that big a deal, I guess. <laughs> but the other issue, I'm not sure how the grill guard's going to play into this. I'm kind of dreading seeing what comes of that, but that's another story for another day. Uh, note the leather's still in place. Uh, the push pins, you can kind of see busted up there. You probably want to replace those. It's just kind of a pain to ever find them. Hey, I forgot to disconnect the hose, but it did it itself. So that's good news. Uh, really, in terms of rubber holding the radiator, not much. That's what was described in the uh, manual. I'm not seeing anything. There's those two little rings there, I guess, maybe where the tanks both sit. But uh, nothing major. As you can see, the power steering cooler survived. I'm happy with that. I uh, still need to cap those before I come in for the night. But right there, I tell you, I got her out. Everything was good. And then I heard the onslaught of fluid. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, I thought, no worries. Just tilt it, you know, just keep it upright. And then the problem was, as I bent forward to try and get the bucket out, all heck just broke loose. Literally, what was left in the radiator, which was quite a bit, uh, just completely dumped out. It forced the towel I had in, made this mess. I got it I'm working on getting it cleaned up. It'll dry out overnight. Uh, but again, that looks terrible in that bucket. It's not what was in the truck in terms of the coolant and the antifreeze. That was just the transmission fluid that dripped in. Uh, which is an unfortunate thing, but you know, that's what we got to deal with. So, uh, always dispose, dispose of your fluids properly. But again, that line, if you want to cap it, 5 sixteenths. And with that said, this is my stopping point because it's really late. One and two, uh, we're about to max out the card and the battery is dying. So, decent progress. Again, this is a, it's not a, not a race, it's a journey type of thing, whatever cliche saying you want to throw in feel free to do so <laughs> so i've had the under hood light charging this entire time i've been out here tonight so hopefully it'll be ready to go the astro though i tell you this sucker's got some battery life here so it's usually on high but we'll go ahead and turn it off before i forget i'm gonna sop some more of this up and uh, maybe kind of think about what we'll tackle tomorrow there's many many different ways you can proceed with this and we'll try to figure out what'll work best for us but i hope you're enjoying i hope you're learning hopefully it's helping you out that's kind of the goal uh, if you really want to do better than me uh, have plenty of space again i've got a box right there and you know a transmission and all kinds of crud but a little bit of space could have prevented that also if you had a buddy uh, or if you you know had another catch can or bucket out because like i said i mean i drained that the valve was open and we went through a lot of coolant in retrospect what i would recommend you do once you've got the radiator freed at least on this side you know from the top with a 10 millimeter bolt loosen the other one enough where you can lift it up and kind of have it slope down at an angle towards the drain and hopefully if you're able to drain all of that out with the angle or the ramp or the incline or whatever you want to call it you can avoid what just happened to me 
hopefully. Can't make any promises, but you should be doing better, and you might even have less of a mess. So uh, you're welcome. But uh, with that said, I had a good time. Hope you're enjoying. We'll be back. We still got a lot to go here. So uh, stay tuned. We'll tackle this together. And like I said, ultimately the end goal, if it helps one person out, we've done our job. But uh, like I said, tons of different ways to go about it. I'm just kind of doing doing what I think would work. So, so far, so good. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at LoneStarMopars. I gotta run before the camera dies. I will catch you back here tomorrow.